Hey guys, I am so excited to bring you guys this video. It's kind of a follow-up to the um, video we just posted the other day on everything you know, need to know about health issues and chronic courses and some preliminary details on health, health testing. So if you missed that video, go check it out first. Um, but I wanted to take this time to share really a progress update that we've seen that's huge. Um, you know how you think you know something, but you have no proof. It's just your intuition, your gut. Um, yeah, so you guys know, um, and especially I'm seeing it for myself in filming myself uh, and putting myself on YouTube. I'm starting to see things that I wasn't consciously aware of in my behavior. And I've seen how good my dogs can be sometimes when I'm not around. And many trainers tell you half of their issue, if not 99% of it, is with the owner, not the dog. Okay, so yes, all of that is probably true. Um, and one other mind-blowing thing that I've learned this year is you are your dog's advocate. Okay, what does that mean? You know, for those of you guys who have been with me, this might be repetitive, but, uh, you know, this is something that's just going to continue to come up on my journey as you guys follow me. But you know what your dog likes and doesn't like. We are never forced to really do much that we don't want to do. And we should never put our dogs knowingly in an uncomfortable position uh, just for the sake of it. So in our new training center, your dog keeps to themselves. You know, uh, you may say hi to somebody and they are to stay seated until you kind of give that okay to interact and in doing so every single interaction with them will be positive likely because they will have seen oh my human likes that person i can like that person that's the mindset you want to have for a connie corso because they need to look to you as the alpha and see that you're okay with this person, so I should be okay with that person. And if you implement that from the moment you start to build your relationship, after you first pick up your puppy, they will always see, okay, mom, dad, you know, brother, sister, it should be consistent across your family in a routine. We're gonna do all these things you know, before I interact with, with a, another human. So you really have to advocate for, for your dog, okay? That can be an interesting concept to truly understand, but I basically want to free you guys from any rules you may put in your head that your dog has to be pet by a stranger. No, they don't, okay? This is the perfect timing with the coronavirus going around, social distancing. Walk your dog, enjoy your dog. Nobody has to come up, run up to your dog and, and pet it. In some situations, you know, you may have a cute neighborhood kid. This is excellent opportunity. I want my dog to, um, to be okay with them. We're gonna see them often. Be your dog's advocate. Yeah, sure, you can pet my dog. Stop running, approach slowly, you know, stand here, and I'll let you know when it's okay to pet them. So you want to have a routine in how there, there's a greeting. And not only is that going to help you be an advocate for your corso, it's also going to help you in protection work. Because the minute you don't go through that routine and you're not okay with somebody, your dog kind of knows, oh, okay, mom hasn't given me the thumbs up here mom does hasn't said this person is okay you know so off you go you know protection wise and do what you need to do bud so it's a very solid method um and i've even been learning that sometimes my dog wants to call the shots so Chevy and I were in class and she didn't want to do the exercise because she wanted the opportunity to say hi to somebody first instead of having to walk around them. And I'm like, oh, do you mind if she says hi to you? Because we've been so used to catering to her and her um, growing her social confidence. And they're like, no, she's in a good place now. It's not time to say hi to anyone. She needs to go back in line. 
So, you know, your dog needs to be in certain situations when you're doing socialization that you allow the person to say hi to them, that you allow your dog to say hi to that person, and situations where uh, they're used to you saying no. So they kind of uh, become okay with both approaches. Um, hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't, it's a lot to digest. I'm only really getting this now and I've been in this for three, three years. So if it takes you a year to understand it, you're two years ahead of me. So, you know, uh, hopefully that makes sense. Okay. Uh, a well-temperamented corso does not have to allow everyone to pet them, okay? No, 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 no. Get that out of your head, okay? A well-trained corso, okay, is one that looks to you and if you say it's okay, allows, you know, that hello and looks to you before they approach somebody that they, they may wanna see. You guys have built a solid routine in place. You are leading them and they are following uh, and looking to you for guidance, okay? So that's, that's the bar. Um, we've also learned and you've seen, okay? If you need a reminder, go back to my Corsos Are Fighting video or the aftermath of my Corsos Are Fighting video. I still get comments today on those videos because people are probably looking for Corso fight videos or it's you know getting recommended by Google, I don't know. But I still get comments today like, you need to do this or you need to do that or you, know, you don't have control over your dogs. And yeah, in that moment, I did not. Um, but what's wrong is people judged uh, 20 minutes of our lives and made an assessment on us, period, okay? But I wanted to share that with you guys uh, because I think it's important to know that even to someone who may have had confidence, may know what they're doing, you're always gonna be confronted with a new case. You know, and in this case, we weren't planning on having three dogs. Uh, we didn't know what we were doing with three dogs. And um, I thought everything was fine. And then when I started filming, adding that extra layer of distraction in, everything went crazy. And I lost my confidence, uh, you know, because everyone loves cute puppy videos. Um, but when you have to start saying, you know, your dog has to come back, it did something, you know, you're, uh, you're nervous behind the camera, or at least I was. So, but you will, you will see, okay, how much growth there has been from those videos until now. And most of that is from training I've been doing with Chevy at our training club who are awesome, okay? Um, if you live in the greater Atlanta area and you wanna know where to go, send me a message on Instagram. Um, also, majority of the change has been for me. There have always been cases in the last couple years where I know that I have anxiety from what happened at the dog park, um, you know, with Logan's attack. Um, you know, Logan has air snapped people before. The trainers uh, that we have worked with have, have wanted to desensitize him and given him exposure to things and he has air snapped and he's made contact twice. So I'm always like, have you seen the size of Logan's head? Okay, if he actually legit purposely bites somebody, like the average cost of a dog bite hospital cost visit stay, I was looking it up the other day, I think it's like close to $19,000. I don't have $19,000. Me being calm, learning my emotions, being aware of what I'm feeling has helped me tremendously. Just learning more about dog behavior, seeing how other people react in person, like going to the dog park without the dogs, 
you know, another great video to watch if you haven't watched it already and just seeing how, what other owners do to distract bad behaviors and do other things and really building up your confidence that you can advocate for your dog, that you can handle many of the situations that come their way, you know, and, and help them navigate uh, the world and, and protect them um, are really, really important. And so I have been working on myself a lot, uh, very much so recently, if, as I've shared with you guys. And so when we went, went um, to the vet for health testing, I was like, okay, so let's be aware of how I'm feeling. This is a vet who has Connie Corsos. She knows how they work. You can give her the history, you know, you can relax and, you know, let's just muzzle Logan, uh, to be sure. Um, but you know, his limitations you know, your limitations and you can share that with the vet and, you know, we'll just muzzle him. Everyone's safe. We'll be good because we've taken him, like I said, to his original vet for, I can't even count how many visits. Uh, then we took him to, uh, another animal hospital, Kennesaw Animal Hospital, um, up in, uh, Western, Northern Western Georgia. Um, because they apparently did health testing and um, he did really, really well until the vet sat down with him and was like, I'm not sure if he's going to allow this. So there was doubt in her, her mind. So I know that Logan does not do well with people uh, that are nervous with him in a, in a room, a small room. And that's why I choose to muzzle him at the vets. So... Um, we've also seen him change at his own vet because they've got a lot of new staff that have turned over and we're not going all the time now. We go maybe once, maybe twice a year and, uh, many people when they see Logan, they're scared, especially when he's nervous back or nervous in the beginning. Um, he's got a big bark, he's got a giant head. And so, um, to, to make this clear how powerful your thoughts and energy are, the first incident we actually had at our own vet was with a new vet tech who was a bit older. She wasn't familiar with the dogs, but Logan loved our regular vet and, um, he never had any issues. And I was on Instagram that day and saw how many corsos had to be muzzled or, had caused issues at their vet. And I was like, you know, I'm so proud of Logan because Corsos usually don't do well with the vets. As soon as I said that, he bolted up after they were checking him out and uh, had them both against the wall and he was air snapping, warning them, don't touch me. When originally he was fine, laying down, letting them assess, you know, his injury. So I was like, how was I complimenting him? And it turned into that. Like, what changed? Well, I said something that could have caused, especially the new vet tech, to be nervous and think, oh man, yeah, like these, this breed is a dangerous breed. Logan is so, so, so sensitive. And so what you're thinking, what other people are thinking, you really need to be mindful of uh, with this breed, especially with, I find, the males um, who just seem to be that much more sensitive than the females, okay? And that's where you need to be their advocate, and this all rolls into one nice package. But, you know, uh, he was not doing well at vets because it's not something we regularly did. Um, and that's why they say socialization is something you have to continue to do. Bring your dog into the vet once a month. Um, you know, it's something that I would even recommend, period. You know, when you pass your vet, hey, just wanted to stop in, use the scale, say hi to everyone. You know, can I walk them into a room and back? So it just becomes something they're used to. And any of the vet techs or vet, you know, 
vets can come out, pet him, and it's all, you know, a familiar place, not just something they're familiar with for the first year or so of their lives. Um, but again, didn't think to do that. So a tip for anyone who's starting out with a younger pup is don't stop going to the vet when you don't need to because it's important to socialize dogs after two years old, even when you think your work may be done. Because all of our issues really only started after probably from year two to three. Okay, and so I've had all of these experiences and I had to go to a new vet to try and do health testing. So I told them the history, I did my research, advocated for my dogs, know that, you know, he has his limitations in small spaces when people touch him and was very honest and was again, very aware of my feelings. And so um, I just said, I'm gonna relax, I'm gonna relax. Um, I've been concentrating on just taking deep breaths and you know, everything's gonna be fine. I'm not gonna make him do something uh, and pretend he's a friendly dog for my own pride. I'm gonna be honest, we're gonna be good. So I muzzled him. Um, and with the virus pandemic going on, I wasn't allowed in the office. So I was kind of like, I don't even know <laughs> where, where I'm sending my dog because it's my first time at this vet. But luckily I trust the vet tech who we train with. And I, I know the vet, I know we've never formally met, but I know her from seeing her in class, uh, once or twice. And, and I know she owns Corsos and I read her profile you know, on the website and you just gotta sometimes go with the flow. So I'm like, this will be interesting. Logan is going into a new place without me, but maybe he'll do better. We'll see what happens. Like how much of the issue am I? Um, and I need to just be aware. I assess the situation ahead of time. I plan to remain calm and relax as much as possible. So it was uh, amazing. This, when you connect all the dots, okay, you don't put your dog in a bad situation. You deal with people who know dogs, who know the breed, um, who aren't secretly thinking nervous thoughts in their head, okay? So you, you've done what you need to do and have a good dog person that you're a safe person for your dogs, let's call it that, okay, that they're interacting with. And then, so we had the vet who's experienced with Corsos, um, owns them herself, knows how they work, their behavior, okay. Then I was aware of myself trying to have a very calm, peaceful energy, let my dog smell, went there early so there's no rush or anxiety, um, happening, let them walk around, um, you know, and then when they came out and they barked at the new vet tech, um, the, I didn't know her, uh, the person that came out, I had them go into a sit stay, then a down stay while I filled out the paperwork. So we did things in a manner that was very relaxing, um, not putting them in a forceful position. Um, and then, you know, muzzled Logan, he went in and, you know, the vet took off his muzzle as soon as she brought him out. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, <laughs> but she obviously knows what she's doing. And so when she took off his muzzle, he walked around and, you know, jumped into the back of the truck. And I was like, okay, this, this is good. He's not a aggressive dog. He's not barking at anyone. He's comfortable and he's given himself a timeout. And Phoenix uh, went in, did her turn, came back. And if anything, Phoenix was actually uh, nervous to leave, um, you know, which is something she's been doing since uh, her false pregnancy. Or maybe we just haven't done enough with her since she had puppies, because we never uh, had this issue before that I knew of. And, uh, but we're dealing with some separation anxiety with her in public not at home. So, um, 
you know, then we were talking and Logan decided, oh, Phoenix is getting pets. I want pets. So he went up to the vet and, you know, put his nose up to her. And uh, I was like, relax, breathe. She, kn she knows. You've told her, you know, how he is. It's fine. And he looks like he's trying to engage her, you know, whereas in the past I would say, you know, no, you can't uh, pet my dog. Just don't. So there'd be just, I wasn't dealing with somebody who I could just say, you know, I wasn't doing my research on who I was letting them deal with. How do I say this? I wasn't dealing with safe dog people. And I knew the vet was a safe dog person. So I let her be an expert because she knows dogs, she works with them. And um, I've told her everything I could on, on Logan. And so uh, they were buddies from that point on. And then, you know, he was trying to get her attention and you'd swear they have been best friends for life. He was giving her a pause with, just for like, hey, you know, you know how Logan is. He likes to get butt scratches. Um, and then her male corso <laughs> was going nuts inside. Um, you know, so it, it just goes to show you that look at everything. Be open to everything. Film yourself. Take some time to be aware of what's going on in your head. If you're not conscious and you're unconscious, you know, which is so often the stage that we're in when we deal with flight or fight, we don't even know what's happening. Your brain is just running on, on what it needs to do to, to defend you um, in, in defense mode. So, you know, slow down look at things, think about what happened, be, be aware, do what you need to do to be aware of your, of your situation, okay? So it's making a huge difference. I would not have ever guessed that Logan would have done that well at the vet. I think it's a testimony of how good they are. They have extremely high reviews. If you're in the Atlanta area, definitely check out uh, Windy Hill um, Veterinary Hospital. Excellent. And if you have a Corso, ask for the vet who is familiar with the breed. She is amazing. Okay, so, you know, just never think it's too late. Okay, if your dog is acting up, it could be you, you know. And it's not that something is necessarily wrong with you. You know, if your kid constantly does the same thing, you're going to assume that behavior is going to happen. Um, and you have to somehow get over it and train them and have a different energy for them to, to progress. But it's never too late to teach an old dog new tricks. Um, fearful, reactive dogs in my humble opinion, can recover if you put in the time and the work. And to me, that is so exciting. I hope it gives you guys hope. Um, a lot of us are home now. We have time, you know, to, to build trust with our dogs. There's many activities that you can do to do that at home. Unfortunately, we're not in a place where we can socialize but build that bond at home. Work on yourself, work on the energy you have around your dog. You know, be aware of how you're feeling when somebody new comes around your dog. Do you trust them? You know, do you trust your dog? What's, what's going on? Be, be aware, but you know, I. I wanted to talk about that and I think it's critical, absolutely critical if you want to own a Connie Corso. You need to advocate for them, you need to throw all the rules out the window and you know, be aware of yourself, your emotions, 
and, and heal from anything that's happened with you and your dog or a situation that could be holding you back in that moment. Process trauma that's happened and, you know, heal from it, move on. There's lessons in it and grow, become a better person. Um, and it's all worth it. It becomes something that's incredibly powerful. And I'm also excited because another great YouTube channels is uh, Paul Professional Pals um, YouTube. He has some even more information uh, that should help me on my journey. So I'm excited to uh, connect with him. Check out his videos if you haven't already. And yeah, so I just wanted to share that good news with you guys because I don't always share the good. And I wish I filmed that, but I didn't want to be like, oh, hi, I'm some new crazy YouTuber and I have to film everything we do at your vet's office. Uh, but, but I did tell her uh, that I probably will film some stuff, especially on health test day. So um, really, really happy. And we'll be moving actually all our animals over to that, uh, that office because... You know, corsos are so discriminated against, and I don't know the pain of what you go through if you own a pit bull. I know German Shepherds get it. Um, but, you know, in these situations, you have to be aware of that, and you have to advocate for your, for your dog. So everything is possible. It can always get better. Um, I'm excited for all of us on our journeys at becoming better pet parents and bettering the breed and being better breed ambassadors and never ever believe it's hopeless or you're stuck somewhere. Just be honest. People are out there. They're willing to help you. They're hard to find. There's a lot of mean, mean, angry, bitter people, but you know, you could do it. Okay. Thank you guys for watching like our video, subscribe if you haven't already, and uh, definitely comment below on, you know, if you have a hopeful story or if you're struggling with something. Um, yeah. And I'm going to even go as far as saying, you know, we have, we're getting, what are we at? Let's say 1.5, not, not a ton, but I think, we're between one to 2,000 subscribers, okay? So it's a small YouTube channel. If you want to film a video of any behavioral problems and send them in to me, I will post them and we can dissect anything that we see in a very positive manner of you and your dog. So, you know, we're all about learning together here. So if that's something that you want to do, you know, I'll do my best to delete any negative comments um, to protect you guys from any negative harm in sharing, but that's an option. You know, if that's something you're interested in doing, let me know in the comments below. But yeah, there's hope and everything can get better. So thank you guys for watching today and we'll see you guys soon.